Hi everyone, my name is Helen Dion. I am Marketing Manager at SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our Axiomatica Cloud ERP Lunch and Learn. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the presentation. To submit a question, look for the questions tab in your GoToWebinar window, and we'll be answering them throughout the webinar. Also, we are recording this presentation, and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees, as well as anyone who registered but was unable to attend. With that said, I hope you're all enjoying your Grubhub lunch or brunch, depending on your time zone, and we appreciate your, you taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Some of you already know a little bit about Axiomatica, and some of you are here to start your discovery. So um, no matter what part of your journey you're on, we're here to help you get a better understanding of this cloud ERP and also get to know SWK a little bit better. So please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Uh, we do have a subject matter expert with us today, Mike Duberstein. So with that said, I'm going to hand it off to you, Mike. Thanks, Helen, appreciate it. Um, if you guys who are on would do me a favor and, and just put in the chat um, what you got with your Grubhub lunches, I'm, I'm dying to know. Hope it all is delicious and that it isn't too distracting and you're able to pay attention to both the food and to me. Welcome to the Lunch and Learn today. I'm really excited to tell you about uh, who Acumatica is and what they're all about and also jump into the product a little bit and just give you a small taste of what it can do. But before we do that, um, just a little bit about me. As Helen said, my name is Mike Duberstein and I'm a solutions architect here at SWK. I came from the construction industry, uh, working in a variety of roles across two different companies before I came on to SWK. I've seen the way that ERP can impact the way a company does business, both positively and negatively. And I recognize how important it is to get the uh, right solution for your company in place. So I hope that everyone is able to come away with something valuable from our time here today. So on the agenda for today, we're just gonna start by talking a little bit about who SWK Technologies is. After that, I'll do an overview of who Acumatica is. And then after that, we'll jump right on into the product for the main event. Additionally, we've saved some time for, for the Q&A. So any questions that we're not able to get to in the moment um, or as the presentation unfolds, feel free to ask them in the chat and then I'll answer the questions as we go, but we'll also have a dedicated Q&A time at the end. So SWK Technologies is under our parent company, Silverstone Technologies, which is a publicly held company that trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol SSNT. We also have multiple divisions as a value-added reseller. SWK is our ERP division, which is where I am, and that's also where the Acumatica practice is. Um, Secure Cloud Services is our hosting company, and we have a lot of legacy solutions that we host there, but we also host a couple of folks that decided to go with the private cloud solution for Acumatica, which Acumatica allows as an option, as we'll see here shortly. And we also have a cybersecurity division. SWK's headquarters is in North New Jersey in East Hanover, and we have offices from coast to coast. A lot of our workforce is remote, including myself. I'm based in beautiful Portland, Maine, although it's not been so beautiful as, as winter comes upon us. Um, a few of the locations that we have offices in are listed below. Besides New Jersey, we also have offices in Chicago, North Carolina, California, New York, Texas, Arizona, Washington, and Oregon. This means that we have a good portion of the country covered. We have about 200 professionals and over 6,000 customers across all ERP platforms that we offer. As we transition now to Acumatica, um, I thought it would be beneficial to take a second to recap the Acumatica Summit that happened this past February. Uh, as you can see clear before the, before the pandemic, no social distancing here, no masks. Um, hard to even remember times like that at times. But um, that, that happened in February and Acumatica actually hosts that every year. And this past year it was in the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas. I got to know that casino like the back of my hand. It was a really great event, and it was the largest summit that Acumatica has had to date, and it's getting bigger each year. All the partners are out there and a good number of customers. It's an excellent opportunity for expanding your network and learning what's coming around the bend from Acumatica. They usually have several great keynotes that always show their most exciting features in the upcoming release, and they have really useful breakout sessions as well as offering training later in the week. Additionally, many ISVs are at the summit to showcase what their products can do. And as you can see here in the bottom right, they throw a pretty big party where people actually dance, which is uh, which I was definitely fond of. 
one of the highlights for us was being awarded partner of the year for the second year in a row. Acumatica has about 300 partners that sell and implement Acumatica globally, and it's a real honor that we've been named partner of the year twice. Here I am in the back right hiding behind Daryl next to my buddy, Seth. Uh, Acumatica has announced that due to the pandemic, they're going to be pushing next year's summit to May. Sign up is now ongoing for this event. It will once again be in Las Vegas, and I hope to see some of you guys there. Acumatica is all about digital transformation. More than an ERP, Acumatica is a technology platform that helps you digital, digitally transform your business. It's much more than a financial platform. It is truly a platform that will help your business adapt to our increasingly digital environment. The best path for transforming your business to thrive in the new digital economy is to utilize software solutions that were built with this new digital economy in mind. And that is really what Acumatica is. Being a platform is actually one of the key things that separates Acumatica from other ERP solutions. In fact, when you ask Acumatica what type of company they are, they will say they're a technology company. I ask them that often, I think they get tired of answering. But this is evident in the events that they put on because they're always highlighting their latest and greatest technology. One feature that we won't have time to show in today's demo, but is worth noting, is that they're slowly building machine learning into Acumatica in every release. In the second release of 2020, which came out just about two months ago, they have the option for AP document recognition. This means you can now upload PDFs to Acumatica and the system will read the PDF and begin to fill out the record in Acumatica for you. I'll mention that a little bit more later on, but that is crazy stuff. Acumatica is without question the best solution for digitally minded companies. All of these bullet points are important, but I wanted to pick out three to touch on just a little bit more. Connected business is a crucial one. In today's landscape, now more than ever, we find a lot of companies utilizing third-party solutions to solve for their problems. But a lot of times there's no integration to their ERP or the integration isn't very good. Acumatica brings many solutions formally provided by third parties under one roof so you can manage all parts of your business in this one software. That is a game changer. You find that you have a niche specific need that out of the box Acumatica doesn't naturally support, for instance, say property management, there are a number of ISVs out there that can meet your needs. And because they're partnered with Acumatica, that means the turnaround time from purchasing a solution to having it up and running and working for you will be relatively short. Uh, finally, future-proof. And I mean this in two senses. One, because Acumatica is a platform, they're constantly on the cutting edge adding exciting technology and further developing their product. In fact, 70, around 70% 70 of their employees are focused on product development. This means that you aren't in danger of buying products that work right now, but in five years you're left in thus by far superior technology. Additionally, with unexpected circumstances that have led to a lot of people working remotely that weren't before, Acumatica is easily able to cope with that need. These are just a couple of comments from Acumatica customers who have felt a positive impact from Acumatica in light of the pandemic. Alex Craster says, I'm really thankful that we have Acumatica in place right now. If we had still been operating from the old platform, we would have had some significant challenges with people working from home and staying connected. Keep up the good work. And also we have uh, Derek, uh, the third one down, I'm not even gonna, I guess that's L Elledge. Uh, Elledge, we'll go with that. Power Storage Solutions is not missing a beat thanks to our decision to go with Acumatica. So we're, we're seeing not just hobbling along, but thriving because of, of a strategic decision to go with a digitally minded platform. And so Acumatica has really helped companies deal with the unexpected and they'll continue to do so in the future. Unlike many other solutions that are written for one specific industry and exclude others, Acumatica is able to support nearly any industry. They have financial management, inventory management, and payroll, among many other things that aren't listed here. As I mentioned before, this is all under one roof, so no need to buy an accounting software and then tack on all these additional solutions to try and meet your needs. For project accounting, if you remember Solomon Software, which is a legacy product that some people still use, one of the founders of Acumatic actually came from Solomon. So that's where Acumatic gets its roots from, and it's really strong in project accounting. There's also a CRM suite that's native to Acumatica as well. A lot of people ask about that. And as for payroll, 
Um, the first release of this year, 2020 R1, was actually when payroll became native, native to Acumatica. At SWK, we have a variety of HCM payroll solutions that can no doubt meet any of the needs that you might have in those areas. Acumatica has a number of additions, including a distribution addition, a manufacturing addition, an e-commerce addition, as well as others. Today, we aren't going to be focusing on any one addition. However, it is important to note that all the additions have the ability to add features from other additions within them. The modules from these additions talk to each other seamlessly. We've run into companies that, for instance, need construction functionality, but also need manufacturing capability. Acumatica is really the only solution out there that's built for companies that have complex needs like that. In fact, one of the companies that I used to work for before I came to SWK is a construction company that had a service division, and they are now happily on Acumatica because Acumatica didn't make them sacrifice one part of their business in favor of the other. Acumatica invests about 60 to 70% of their revenue back into their product. Their code base actually doubles about every two and a half years, which is staggering. They have done that in a very stable way, but I think that shows in a very unique way how much they continue to enhance the platform. This is truly unlike any other mid-market ERP because of their framework. Looking at their technology stack, their core is actually Microsoft's SQL as the database. And if you go with the follow the cloud option, they use Amazon Web Services for hosting, and they use the common development tools and languages, which helps if you decide to do customizations or integrations to Acumatica yourself. Acumatica's technology strategy was to pick common tools that already exist, that people already know, to enhance comfortability with the platform for even new users. So um, this is the base of what they call their XRP. And as I mentioned, the SQL Server, uh, Amazon Web Services, and the development um, tools are the base of, of the XRP. Um, and all of those things are what um, essentially provide the features for Acumatica. For example, the mobile framework, having the mobile device be the same uh, framework as, as the, the desktop accessible version, um, having the ability for multi-tenants, document management, easy attachment, and search of documents is based on, on all of these items, being able to customize your framework, changing workflows and APIs. This is the XRP platform that then enables um, the ERP functions, which would be financials, inventory control, order management, CRM, as well as other things. This is where the users that will be in Acumatica will be doing the work. And this is all supported by the XRP platform below. And all of this is included in the base product. We've had customers buy Acumatica for, uh, for one industry that later could easily add one of Acumatica's modules to meet their needs. This phased approach is an excellent strategy and it keeps your employees from having to learn a new interface as new functionality is added. During our demos, one thing we really try to show is how all of our modules are cross-connected, as I've already mentioned a few times. This is important because when we talk with folks today that aren't using Acumatica, it isn't uncommon for us to find that they, they have like two or three silos of data, for instance, maybe accounting, CRM, and project management. None of their systems talk to one another, and any data that's needed for transfer has to be input manually or hand jammed. So we solve for this in Acumatica, and in each implementation, we strive to set up connected cross-module workflows. So for example, if I have a CRM and the CRM and I want to build out an estimate, I can do it right from the CRM. Then once the estimate's approved, I can click a button and have that estimate become a project or a sales order. Simple as that. But not so simple if CRM isn't connected to your estimating software, which isn't integrated to your accounting software. This is just one example of how a connected cross-module workflow uh, can help streamline your company processes, but the options are abundant. Here you can see that Acumatica has been highly awarded by independent organizations. Nucleus Research is a vendor-neutral organization that rates different ERP solutions, and you can easily find this value matrix on the web. Actually, for two years running, Acumatica has been awarded the most usable ERP in the mid-market space. This is because it's a very intuitive software that allows for configuration based on user preferences. Having worked on four different ERPs before I got into Acumatica, I can actually personally attest to this. On the right, we have a matrix from Infotech, which shows us what they call the emotional footprint. 
This essentially tells us how likely existing customers are to recommend the solution that they are using to a family member's business or a friend's business. Acumatica ranks extremely high here in this matrix and comes in far ahead of other mid-market providers that are out there. Acumatica has received other accolades as well, including the Cody Awards, which is kind of like the Oscars or Golden Globes of the ERP space, only not quite as highly televised. I don't think Ricky Gervais has hosted the Cody Awards yet, um, maybe next year. It was also the PC Magazine's editor's choice and has actually been that choice for four years in a row now. Gartner and G2 Crowd have also highly rated Acumatica and usability, and I think you guys will see what all this usability hype is about once we get into the demo, into the demo here in a little bit. At the summit, Acumatica announced that they have surpassed 6,500 customers worldwide. This is really important for Acumatica, as it is for us, but it's also important for you as the customer because it means that you're not in the experimental realm. The product is tried and true. You're on the cutting edge with Acumatica, but not on the bleeding edge. And as this number continues to grow rapidly, I'm sure it's even higher than this now because this is what was announced in, in February. Acumatica has a really strong commitment to customer success. They have an interactive feedback site that they closely monitor that other customers are able to upvote uh, feedback on. I actually have a couple ideas posted there, and two of them are in the gathering feedback stage. So when you offer a suggestion or make requests of Acumatica, unlike some other ERP solutions, you don't make those suggestions into a black hole. One, one ERP I used to work with, um, they, they, only the publisher could make developmental changes, um, and the, the only one that actually was able to get them to make a change to the core product was uh, the second largest courier in the nation of Egypt. So unless you're a company of that size with certain ERPs, you can't you can't uh, get changes that will meet your needs. But with Acumatica, if it's a good idea, no matter how strong it is or how small you are, um, they'll take that seriously and incorporate it into the product. It's a pretty intensive process getting certified to be able to sell and implement Acumatica uh, because they really prioritize their customers and want partners that will be able to make their customers happy on their platform. And Acumatica uh, has a plus 33 net promoter score, 97% support satisfaction, which is really, really good, and is the fastest growing ERP cloud company. So um, a lot of customer growth there too. When an ERP company picks their product to market, they have a couple deployment options. They can either try and host it themselves or they can partner with the folks that do that the best. So a couple of years back, Acumatica made the strategic decision to partner with Amazon AWS for their hosting. So when you buy the Acumatica SaaS, which about 90% of our customers do these days, it includes hosting. So within about a day of purchasing, you are actually given a URL and access to your environment. Acumatica handles the upgrades as well. And the only part of the, uh, the customer has to has in the upgrade is testing, especially when customizations are present. Backup and disaster recovery are also included which uh, are the benefits of being on AWS. The trailing uptime percentage in the last four months is something like 99.9999%. So it's very stable. I think that that essentially uh, pans out to just a couple of minutes um, or six months or four months. Acumatica was also one of the first products on Microsoft Azure and it supports the 365 and Power in uh, Power BI integration. So as you explore Acumatica, you'll see that there's a really tight integration between Acumatica and the Microsoft technology under the hood, including exporting to and importing to from uh, Excel, sending Outlook emails right from the platform, integration with Power BI, and more. There's no, really nothing to set up in this front. Acumatica just works with these tools out of the box. From a scalability standpoint, one of the metrics that is tracked is what we call ERP transactions. Acumatica currently is currently processing 180 million plus ERP transactions per month. That's a tremendous amount of data that's being processed. That is really comforting because it means that no matter how much data you're processing as a company, it's only really a drop in the bucket of what Acumatica is processing as a platform. So you can rest assured that no matter what your transactional volume is, Acumatica can easily handle it. A key part of Acumatica's architecture is how open it is, which allows for other systems to integrate rapidly. These integrations are additional tools that deep dive into specific functionality, and there are some really exciting options that are available here. 
One that I think many companies could benefit from is the integration with DocuSign, which allows you to send off forms to be reviewed and signed electronically right from Acumatica. The integrations listed here are bi-directional, which means that information can originate from either source and be automatically shared to the other. One that isn't listed here that's worth mentioning is Salesforce, which is a really, well, I guess it is listed here, sorry. Really popular CRM. A lot of folks are already using when uh, they come to Acumatica. Well, guess what, folks? If you like it, you can keep it. There's a lot more ISV options to browse, and certainly there's an option out there that will meet your needs no matter how specific your need is. Security is a hot topic these days, and Acumatica is unsurprisingly on top of it. They have the physical security of Amazon AWS data centers, but they also provide role-based user access so that you can only see what your users can only see what you want them to see, as well as the option for multi-factor multi authentication logins, which is always a bit of a tongue twister for me. There are a ton of reports available out of the box, and anything specific you might need that hasn't been met in those reports, you can use the report designer tool to create the report. Now, I'm no technical savant, but even I was able to get into the report designer and use it to make small changes once I got used to it. The dashboards are really easy to set up. With a little guidance, everyone in your company will likely be able to set up their own dashboards. For additional analytics and BI, there's an easy integration with Microsoft Power BI, as mentioned before, as well as other options like Data Self and Blixo, which is an Excel-based reporting tool that allows you to write functions in Excel that query the Acumatica database. You can easily access Acumatica from anywhere even from your phone on a beach in Thailand during a long-needed vacation after your ERP implementation. Just imagine that light breeze blowing through your hair, ruffling your Hawaiian shirt. Sorry, guys, I'm back. I got lost there for a second. I guess I need a vacation. With, a, with natural language integration, you can now talk to your ERP as well. So, for instance, if you have any sort of inventory, you can ask Amazon Alexa how much of that particular item you have, and she would tell you. Slick stuff. We've already talked a little bit about this slide and what AWS includes, but the private cloud is also available based on user preference or need. And if you already have your own private cloud, we can deploy there as well. We have some customers that are also deploying on premises. Huge differentiator between Acumatica and other solutions is the licensing model. Many solutions can find you by users, and so you pay for your growth, even while your new user may not be fully functional in that other solution. With Acumatica, they look at your monthly commercial transactions instead of your users. This means we look at the number of AR invoices processed per month, or AP invoices processed per month, whichever is higher, and the implication is um, what, that you will never pay more for Acum Acumatica unless you've already grown. This means that you will be able to give more employees access to Acumatica, but you won't be paying extra for it. Other solutions may you pay for anticipated growth, but with Acumatica, you don't pay until growth is realized through increased transactions. With Acumatica, your data is your own. A really important question to ask when evaluating ERPs is, if I ever choose to leave my ERP, what format will I get my data in? I've been involved with a few implementations back in my younger days, Geez, I kind of sound like my grandpa. And I can tell you that working with an ERP where your data is hard to access is a nightmare for migration to your new solution. In some solutions, you get flat files and spreadsheets. But with Acumatica, you get a full SQL database, and you have access to that database during the life of your subscription as well. Training is a really important part of implementation, and Acumatica does a great job here. Along with the training that we at SWK will provide, Acumatica also has an open university with tons of resources to help you advance in your knowledge of the platform. There are lots of courses that, can take, that you can take and videos that you can watch, and all of this comes at no cost to you. Several years ago, Acumatica came out with a customer bill of rights that was intended to set the standard for how to treat customers in the ERP industry. You can easily find this on the web. And this is a really unmatched Bill of Rights that a lot of other ERP platforms have yet to uh, really be able to treat their customers in the same way. And a few points to highlight here, again, um, are the customer, the, sorry, the consumer-based licensing model, which enables growth, as well as the commitment that Acumatica makes to never increase what they are charging you by more than 3% a year. The last one I wanted to mention was the support, because at, between Acumatica's support network and our own 12-person support help desk, you are thoroughly covered for support. There are a lot of exciting features 
that came uh, out in the second release of 2020. Acumatica does two big releases a year, and each time they're adding exciting and useful features. 2020 R2 adds superior streamlined user experience, incorporating modern designs and new functionality that empowers users uh, to deliver their best results by working smarter, not harder. Uh, new art artificial intelligence and machine learning enables um, feature assists further in making this goal a reality, minimizing human, human error and dramatically improving productivity, especially when dealing with repetitive and otherwise manual tasks. Acumatica 2020 R2 continues to strengthen their intelligent functionality with new mission critical best in class capabilities. These robust enhancements span the gamut from financials and banking to CRM and reporting, from inventory and order management to payroll and project. Furthermore, all Acumatica's industry additions gain new capabilities. Commerce, for instance, distribution, manufacturing, and field service, all designed to help your business to thrive, grow, and take flight. And finally, oh, I should have hit spacebar for that part, excuse me. And finally, 2020 R2 adds major advances and in innovation and technology, uh, in innovation and technology to do it already. So let me start that part over, sorry. And finally, 2020 R2 adds major advances in innovation and technology to its already leading cloud platform, enabling you to further future-proof your business and with all, uh, all with a single connected platform for your entire business, as we talked about already. 2020 R2 technology advancements make it even easier to connect to leading integrated solutions while allowing you to personalize Acumatica to meet your ever-changing business requirements without ever having to do any code coding. So Acumatica 2020 R2 is an incredibly uh, is incredibly packed with new capabilities across their best-in-class modules and additions. Um, this is just a quick glimpse here, but um, we can we can really uh, streamline the user experience and uh, new capabilities are available in all these different editions. Um, there's advancements in, the, in technology with automation, visualization, and configurable workflows. Uh, and of course, machine learning is, is slowly making its way into, into Acumatica. And it's really uh, uh, present in um, expense management. It's present in AP document uh, recognition and workflows. And those are just the first two of what I assume are going to be a litany of areas that machine learning um, infiltrates and, and uh, um, infiltrates Acumatica. So uh, there's a lot more to see. Um, and there's a lot more new products coming just around the bend. Um, these are just a few of the features that I'm really excited about from this release, but the full release notes are available on help.acumatica.com. Those notes are actually between 150 and 300 pages, which in full honesty, I actually haven't read. But I point this out to highlight the type of investment that's being made in the product by Acumatica. So these are the new offerings that are available in Acumatica. And, and um, the first is electronic bank and credit card transaction feeds. So you can connect to your bank accounts uh, right from Acumatica and have, have uh, information reconciled and credit cards, um, you know, processing in real time from your bank feed with over 11,000 financial institutions supported. Um, there's advanced expense management, which is new. They've had expense management for a while now, but ex advanced expense management essentially um, will do ex uh, receipt creation from bank feeds and corporate credit cards, and it'll also read receipts that you take pictures of and begin to fill out those records within Acumatica. Um, POS is now is now offered in Acumatica. So if you if you have a, a part of your business that's retail or you are a retail uh, you have you have a, a chain of retail stores that you want to manage, um, you can manage your over the counter retail sales for all your locations in real time. And there's also a quality management module that is now available, um, which will deliver higher customer satisfaction um, and enable you to deliver um, higher quality products and also just meet compliance standards. One new item not mentioned here that I've already talked about a little bit is advanced AP document recognition. And what this does is it will read all PDFs that are sent to an email account that you've set up, scan them into Acumatica, create a new record and, and begin to fill out the record for you, which is a lot like having a robot for an intern. 
So now at long last, thanks for bearing with me, hearing my voice just go on and on for half an hour. Let's go ahead and get into product. Just make sure that I am signed in idle for a half an hour. Sometimes it'll sign you out. Um, so what I wanna do now is just show you some features that are consistent throughout the entire system. After that, I'm gonna, apply it to how you might go about managing one part of your business that pretty much everyone deals with accounts receivable. I wanted to point out though before we get going that um, I, I went ahead and, and changed my um, the logo and the colors to reflect Duberstein Inc, my own company uh, with the slogan just do it. And I do that to, to point out that really for every different um, customer, you can make Acumatica feel like home, your own branding, your own colors. And that is something that really um, is an indicator of what Acumatica offers is that, you know, with, with all the different modules and all the different workspaces, um, you can really make a Acumatica be a, it, like an individual product that fits your needs that wouldn't fit another company at all. So it, the personalization of the product is what I'm hinting at here. And we'll see that um, a little bit more. And, and, you know, with the, if, as, as we move along, realize this is an overview and looking specifically at what your company can do um, in Acumatica uh, requires a little bit more of a process of discovery, but we'll be able to make, uh, make you see how Acumatica could, could, be, could be your home software too after, uh, you know, a little bit into the process. So I wanted to start by pointing out dashboards, and I have a number of them here preloaded in the system. Dashboards will um, allow you to, to look at KPIs, which will essentially pull um, performance indicators and tell you, you know, if you're managing tasks for yourself, how on schedule you are with those tasks. It'll also give you a hint how your employees are functioning um, if, you're, if you're in management. And so I'm here in my customer view dashboard, which is my login screen, and it shows me I have four orders to ship, but all four of them are late. I can go in and set thresholds so that at a glance by green meaning good and red meaning bad. And really I can customize those colors if I want. I can very easily see how I'm doing um, at, managing, at managing my workload. I can also look at trends. Uh, all of this I can click into and it'll drill down into the inquiry that's showing this information. I can, I can have uh, you know, an inquiry screen, like a list here based on a particular criteria. This one's recent activities, pie charts. And I'll click into this so you can see all this is editable. A lot of other ERPs, what they'll do is they'll say, if they have dashboards at all, they'll, they'll predetermine what dashboards you get, um, letting the people there and their uh, their development team assume that they, or, you know, take a guess that will be most helpful for your business. But for you, uh, you can go in and create a new one with relatively little training that will show you exactly what um, you want to see and will help you manage your business. So. Um, I've actually went ahead and created one just for this demo, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Don't want to spoil the surprise, though. I also have the ability um, in, with any of these different screens to filter by customer account ID, but I could do this by project. I could do this by item type, whatever the, the case may be. And so I'm going to go ahead and start searching for, for my customer, and I'm going to filter this whole thing by USA bartending. And now it's going to show me all of the sales that are just related to now this dashboard is totally um, related only to this one customer. So really effective way to check on the, the health of a customer to look at activities that are associated, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, sales trends for, for one customer by month. And all of this, again, totally configurable. Um, as we move on, I wanted to point out the workspaces here. So. These are uh, on the left, my, my workspaces, and really what these do uh, is it, it houses all the different screens that are associated with one essential, one department of, or one part of your company. So I'm in the payables workspace, as you can see, um, and I have the ability to edit this as well. This is called my quick menu, and I have the ability to edit what I see here. So if I say, hey, you know, I actually need to uh, see the check register pretty often. I'm going to select that and uh, exit. And now all of a sudden on my quick menu, the check register is available. I can also edit what tiles are up here. And this is good because if you're logged in um, to Acumatica on like an iPad, for instance, 
and you have fat thumbs like I do, you might not want to try and click these list items and you can easily click these tiles that you know you'll need to access on your iPad to get into those screens. Additionally, if I want to see everything, I'll have to just click show all and now all of a sudden everything associated with that workspace is shown. I have the ability to access uh, Acumatica from any browser, from anywhere. Uh, I know I said that before, I'm logged into Google Chrome right now, um, but I, I could be using Safari or you know Mozilla or Microsoft Edge or even Internet Explorer. So um, you know whatever, whatever you're most comfortable with, you can use to access Acumatica. Acumatica also supports multi-branch and multi-company. So if you have multiple different entities, you can have them all set up here in the same system. And if I, if I get into uh, that company, it'll actually go ahead and change the branding if I wanted to, so that uh, as, I'm, as, I'm logging into, um, as I'm logging into a different branch, it will change uh, the colors and I'll know that I'm in a different branch. I like just Dubit, so I'm gonna hop right back on into that branch as soon as, as quick as I hopped out um, and point out now that I'm back here that I also have a favorite screen. So what this means is I can go through my workspace my workspaces and essentially build out a list of items that um, I want to see on a recurring basis that I know that I'll be using a lot. So I can build out essentially my own workspace and it'll show up right here um, for me to hop in and out easily. Again, um, so this is, the, I have access to everything in the screen because I'm logged in as an administrator and, and a super user, but um, access rights are something that are very highly configurable in Acumatica. And um, so you can, you can hide different workspaces that you wouldn't necessarily want certain people to see, like finances. Um, you know, an intern probably doesn't necessarily need access to that unless the intern is the owner's son, maybe. Uh, but um, you can hide that for, for certain people. You can make certain fields read only. You can even get down into the granular, granular level of allowing them to see certain screens by hiding certain fields on those screens. Um, so that is, that's something that is uh, a lot of our customers really, really like to use. Um, also, as uh, you know, except for beyond just having the, the favorites bar, we have uh, a new feature for 2020 R2, which is what we call uh, recently viewed. And that will show me um, by record type if I want to, the most recently viewed uh, items here within Acumatica. So if I want to hop back and forth, if I'm the, if I'm the type of person that wants to be able to access things like that quickly, rather than you know going in here and opening up new tabs, which I also could do, this essentially allows you to open up multiple different tabs all at the same time, and you know hop back and forth as easily as you'd hop back and forth between tabs. So um, that's something new for 2020 R2, and is another indicator of the way that Acumatica is really trying to save you clicks. Um, they care a lot about, about operational efficiency and they want to, they're constantly adding these new features just to make Acumatica that much more usable. Another uh, feature that's very usable is the universal search uh, feature. And so I am actually going to click out of that and get into the customer universal search. And this is what I like to refer to as our own internal Google search engine. And what this is doing is it allows me to search through menu items by a string. So you can see I wrote bill, it's going bills and adjustments, but it's also smart enough to go in and pull uh, anything with, with bill in the string. You can see unbilled has the word bill in it, so it's smart enough to pull that. I also can look at transactions and profiles. I can look at help topics, uh, and all of these are wiki articles that are in the system, these help topics. And these can be edited and you can add them. So if you want to write intercompany protocols that are accessible um, to, to new users or to people in general, uh, you can you can write up help, you can write up uh, those protocols and include them in the system and manage it that way. And then we also have the ability to search through files, images, anything that's attached to the system by this substring bill. Um, one practical example uh, of the way that this would work is. I'm searching menu items, nothing's coming up. Um, so the system actually will hop to the, it's, it's smart enough to know that there's not a menu item. So it's smart enough to, to hop to the transactions and profiles and know that I'm probably looking for a contact, uh, Sam Malone, bartender at Cheers, clearly. Um, and so, uh, it, and it also not just pulls his contact name, but, but any case 
that's associated with him, any record that's associated with Sam Malone. So um, if, if you're on the phone with a customer and you're trying to access um, you know, the records that they're referencing, you can easily put in their name, put in their email, whatever the case may be. You can see the email is pulled up here from the substring Malone. And, and you can search through your entire system very easily use, utilizing this feature. Okay, uh, on to approval maps. I'm going to use the universal search to move over there. Um, this is, again, something that a lot of our customers really utilize, and um, it's important to be able to, to, um, to use this as well. A lot of people, this is a required functionality. And what this is, is the ability to go in and customize workflows and customize approvals. So, um, you know, in any different screen, I can set up a, I can set up a one step, two step, as many step approval uh, as I want to. I can have it be conditional. I can have it be met if all conditions are true, if one condition is true, if one conditional at least, one condition is at least false. And what I can do here is, for example, is um, assign to a work group that like a PO needs to be approved. All, like someone in the finance team needs to approve all, um, all POs. I could have that be uh, someone in the finance team needs to approve any uh, PO over $1,000. Like I can set these conditions uh, to be as flexible as you would want them to be. Very easy to set them up. I can also um, say that that like very large POs, I'm overriding that here and saying that uh, one specific employee actually who's an executive needs to approve large POs. I can I can uh, set up a sequence too so that um, and that's what will happen here is a large PO will first be approved by the finance team and then we'll kick over to uh, Michael Andrews who's the executive here but I can also put in a wait time so I could say like hey the finance finance team has 24 hours from the the generation of a purchase order to review it and if it if it um, if the wait time is uh, escalated or, or expires it'll automatically escalate to the next level. So this is, again, just a really wonderful way to manage your workflows and approvals. All right, let me move on to filtering and show you what that is all about. And um, what filtering does is, like, if you're familiar with how to use Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or anything like that, um, it is just as simple to, to filter data here. And what I'm looking at is, the bills and adjustments screen and payables. So every single AP bill, all records in the system. Now, I mean, this is something I can search through very easily here, but say that I want to, I want to get a sense for, um, you know, all, all, all records that are associated with Bank of America, I'm right clicking and just in, a, in two clicks, all of a sudden I'm filtering every record by Bank of America. So, I mean, that's efficiency. I can very quickly see um, everything that I, you know, you know, anything that I would want to see um, based on, you know, any of these columns, I can click twice and all of a sudden it's showing me all of that information. Um, I can drag and drop this information around. So like post date, if I want that to be first, uh, I can show and hide all, any of these columns too. Uh, but I can also sort this information, ascending or descending. There's a lot of different complex filters that I can apply. And the thing that I think is most impressive and efficient about this is that I can create what I call permanent filters. And this is really only applying to me and my login. But what I'm doing here is uh, using a condition to create a filter that's looking at only uh, invoices that are greater than $10,000. And I went ahead and misspelled greater. Um, looks like it's a cheese grater of sorts. But uh, I, I can do multi conditions, as we'll see a little bit later. But you know, this is something that can help me manage um, any, you know, whatever I would want to look at. If I know that there's something recurring that I would want to see uh, every time that I log in, I can I can create that permanent filter and take a look at that every single time that I log in. All right, so I'm creating a new AP bill, and one of the reasons that I'm doing this is to show the usability as someone that's actually using the system. So. Um, I start writing in ABC, and now it's using the type ahead functionality to help me select what, what uh, information um, the system is smart enough to know would be in there. Uh, another thing that, that I want to point out is that I have the ability to, um, to go into the column configurator, and as I'm entering this data, I can, I can hide what information I want. I can like 
have it tab over different things and I can skip over different things. So let's say that I want to, to skip inventory ID, I want to skip unit of measure, I want to skip unit cost, I can do that. And then as I tab through, um, it, it will skip over those items and allow me to enter efficiently um, based on the things that I know that I need to enter repetitively. So again, a really big workflow uh, improver. I have the ability to add notes to these items. Um, I, I can add attachments to these items. I can add notes to this entire record. I can add files to this entire record and it's as simple as actually uh, dragging and dropping. So I'm just gonna take a PDF and put it in here um, and it actually needs me to save it. But um, I will show you as we go into AR uh, that, that it's really easy to just drag and drop and attach. I can also import from Excel um, very easily. I can also export to Excel very easily using export and import right here. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to AR. Uh, took a lot of time with that with that overview. I'm going to breeze through AR here actually. Um, and I, I just wanted to show you a couple of ways that I would actually manage this if I was um, managing AR. I used to be an AR clerk in my first job out of college. I also managed a team of folks involved in, in collections. And so uh, the way that I would start is I would go into, I'd be managing things from my AR clerk dashboard. And this will, this will give me a sense of what customers I really need to follow up with and what accounts are overdue. I can drill down into any of these things. So I, I'm gonna take a look at, um, start with my salespeople and say like, hey, Steve Church has a good relationship with this customer. I'm gonna drill into this and see what's up. And okay, Toy Star America, I'm gonna click into them. And now all of a sudden, um, I have the ability to, to through activities, um, I can assign a task to Steve Church requesting that he follow up with this customer. So I'm gonna say, um, Please, please call and get them to pay or you are fired. And now I can select, I could select this to be a work group or I could make it a particular person. I'm gonna have the start date and end date be today because I'm pretty serious about this. I save it and close. And now all of a sudden this will show up on Steve Church's tasks dashboard. So um, I can also take a look at, at uh, that's one way to manage it. I can also take a look at my AR aging report and I can go ahead and filter this. And uh, so I can look at the whole aging report, but I'm gonna take a look at the customer class um, because I can, I can assign different customers to different classes. So I'm looking at my key, my key customers, the ones I really need to be on top of in order to stay in business and I'll run this report. And you'll see this is a pretty standard detailed AR aging report, but it's been pared down from all of my invoices to just two pages based on the customer class. Okay. Uh, additionally, I can hop into my invoices and memos. If I didn't want to manage it by customer and wanted to take a look at just by invoice, I could take a look at a big overdue invoices filter, which is a multi-factor today and overdue greater than $10,000. Another way to go about tackling this. And you can see just as how specific I, I can get. So specific it might not even be helpful anymore, but I can create multi-conditional conditional filters that are this much in depth. Okay, I can also go in here and email the, the customer right from here. So um, I can send I can send this I can send an email uh, to them. I can send the invoice right from here as well. And I can have templates that will automatically through business events send this information out uh, to the customer based on, on milestones. So like, hey, it's been it's been uh, 31 days. This particular email template is going to be sent out with another copy of the invoice. Hey, you know, now it's uh, now it's been 45 days. We're going to send the email again and, and the template will be a little bit more sternly worded. And then, um, you know, 60 days, we're sending a dunning letter and we're going to swear at them. So you can you can set that information up as uh, any way that you want to and utilize that to really have be have like an AR clerk uh, a robot working for you. Um, and then the other thing is, that I can do here is manage, you know, if I'm someone that's managing my, my AR uh, customers or my AR, an AR team, I can take, after I'm assigning these tasks, I could take a look at tasks by employees, open tasks by employees. And I can, I can say like, okay, who do I need to fire based on this? And it looks like Jay Parker is in trouble based, based on the fact that he is 15 open tasks. So um, based on, on 
the functionality of assigning tasks, sending emails, having business events sent out this, this information um, automatically and uh, adding uh, activities, I, I can really manage AR effectively. So with that, I am actually going to open up the floor to answer any questions that might have come in while I was busy uh, chatting about and showing you Acumatica. So any questions? Thanks, Mike. So if anyone has questions, you guys can type it into the question section of your GoToWebinar pod. And we did have a couple that have just come in. So the first question, can dashboards, dashboards be viewed on your mobile device? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. I can publish those dashboards specifically to my mobile device. And so while I'm in Thailand, in my Hawaiian shirt, I can be looking at dashboards that help me manage the business from the other end of the, the world. So great question. Anything else? Does Acumatica support Canadian financial standard reporting? That's a good one. That's a really good one. Very specific. Uh, I actually, luckily, uh, I have a, a call with a Canadian customer later today that was um, interested in something like this. And Acumatica in 2020 R2 uh, actually does support those financials that are specific, uh, specifically needed for Canadian reporting. And then additionally, uh, they support French Canadian, they have a, a French Canadian language pack if, if that's so desired. So another great question. Okay. We'll give it a couple more minutes, see if any questions come in. And while we wait for questions, I am gonna launch a poll for everyone to answer. So we're just asking, where are you on your ERP or accounting software selection process? So have you just started researching your solutions? Have you narrowed it down to select two solutions? Are you actively demoing multiple solutions? Or are you down the line, you've already selected and you're planning implementation or other? See if you guys can answer that really quickly for us. We'll give us a sense of, of where you are in your journey and how we can potentially help you. All right, looks like we have a lot of people that have just started their research. So now is definitely a good time to start. Um, the end of the year, starting planning for the next year. And I'm sure a lot of you have had a lot of learnings this past year. It's been a, an interesting year for a lot of us. So great to hear. All right, so we're gonna close the poll. Let's see if any questions are coming in. So Mike, I think you did such a great job that we just had those two questions. You were that great. Thorough. You guys are all you guys are all sold, huh? That's 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 what I like to hear. <laughs> um, the good news is we are sending out a recording of this session. So you can always go back and um, re-watch, share with your team. And if anything comes up, you're, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. And then let me see. We do have a question that's come in. Is it easy to switch from stage? That's, that's a very good question. <laughs> yeah, that is. We have, we've had a lot of customers switch from, from stage. Uh, a, a, a customer that I actually came from that I used to work for switched from stage. Um, it, it, I mean, it, it's an implementation, so it, it it's definitely, um, you know, it, it's a process, but it's, it's something we have a lot of experience experience here with SWK. So um, it it's something that easy, I think it's a little bit of a loaded question, but but it's definitely possible and, and we have the experience to help you through it. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. We, we've had multiple, multiple customers who, as they're growing, they're realizing maybe um, they, they need to look at different options. So we've been instrumental in helping them move over to a different solution, like Acumatica, for example, um, and we're helping them through that process. And we have lots of experts on board that have done this um, so many times we can probably do it in their sleep. So great question. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in, Mike, so I think we'll end it here. So thanks everyone again for joining us. We hope that you uh, 
you learned something new. Um, and if you have any questions for us, please feel free to reach out. We will follow up with an email with the recording, like I said, with an email address that you can reach out to. So thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.